Hello and uh, welcome to a new video. Today we will talk about the REST Assure framework. In uh, this video I will show you an example of REST Assure, uh, how I structured my uh, video, my framework and uh, how easy it is to use it. So let's start. Uh, the framework is created with uh, TestNG and Maven and the IDE that I used is IntelliJ, as you can already see. Uh, first, we will start with the POM file. Um, as you can see here, the dependencies that I'm using, of course, is uh, REST Assure. I'm using uh, Log4j for some additional logging. Um, I'm using JCCH for connecting to a server. I have some particularities in this uh, framework in which I'm also uh, connecting to a server and to a database to execute some operations while I'm um, executing my um, API requests. Okay, uh, Oracle, GDBC driver also as a dependency and Maven of course and besides this there's also the Suit XML file which contains all the tests uh, um, structured in an XML file. Okay, without further ado, let's get into it. So, how I structured. In the resources, I created an environment package where I put my environment.properties file. Um, why did I do this? I did this because um, I'm using the same property file that was used on a JMeter. Uh, suit of tests so this project was created to migrate the uh, functional api tests from jmeter to uh, rest assure so i'm trying to make it as easy as possible so the property file is exactly the one from jmeter i'm just adding it here and using all the properties where i need to okay besides this i've also created two packages for input data template xmls or different uh, packages that may occur uh, along the line. Uh, what is really important here in the resources is the log4j property file. I've created this uh, uh, property file so I can configure my uh, logging separately because I wanted some additional logging and um, in two ways. One is the output that is going to be created on a local file as you can see here. And the other one is the output that's going to be created by the tests and I'm going to show you in a second. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, we'll start with the XML, we'll stop from top to bottom. So with the XML uh, for tests, the XML tests, how do you want to call it? Here uh, we have the testng XML file which contains the class name for where the tests are stored. In this case, as you can see, in test or the API test. Dot. So you can execute this uh, XML and all the tests in the API test class are located. So you can use, you execute all, all of them by just running this XML. Okay, if we move uh, down the line, you can see this is the class uh, the, which contains the actual tests. Uh, different variables that I need to um, prepare so I can use them for my tests. Also a before class with some additional things that I need to uh, prepare. I'll get through them in just a second. So I read my default variables from the property file. I create my token for generating an authentication token which is required by this endpoint. Some additional data that I needed. What is really important here is to notice how easy it is to make a request. You just have to compose your URL and you just, I have an, a variable uh, response which was initiated, which was declared here on the top. And I just use it in each of my tests. I just uh, use response equals, I give it the um, method that I um, created here. In the API methods. So you can see here how REST Assure is working. You just given dot filter, I will explain it in a second, dot header dot get URL. This means that um, 
the uh, response variable will contain the response of my request uh, you and the request is being uh, done via my filter as you can see here there's a new request def of filter so what i've done here i've overwritten overwrite the filter class which is uh, default by uh, rest assure why why did this because i wanted to have some additional loggings as you can see here i made a log for uh, which get or post which method i'm using get post put delete update the url the status code uh, the time of execution in milliseconds and also the whole response as a string so i can see uh, more detailed for each of my tests how um, what type of request i did uh, to which url and all the parameters here these are all uh, changeable you can edit as you want or if you have all your tests are running on happy flow so you have no some no negative scenarios you can also change this and um, as you can see here you add just an additional if status code is bigger than 400 meaning there's a bad request or authorization issue or something else or 500 server errors or issues you can uh, set your logging to appear only if you're in such a case but since i'm also validating some negative test cases this is not the case for us okay getting back to our tests so you composed your url you um, made a call to the get method and um, with the response you've used uh, test ng assert we are asserting that the status code from the response is okay what, what does it mean okay as you can see here okay is 200 uh, this is one of the advantages of using a coding language like Java you already have uh, classes like HTTP status which contains if you see here okay you can see here all the status codes which are predefined so it's really easy to use without just um, comparing to a number you just use the exact status it's much easier okay um other, one other thing that i did here if you don't use priority your tests are gonna be executed not in the order that you want so that's why i added priority to each of the tests because i want them to be run in a specific order um okay we're moving on Besides the assert, I'm also getting one of the values from the response body. This is for an additional test. This is more related to the logic of the endpoint that I was testing. So it's, it's just an example. But um, since we're already here, let's go through the API methods. Because as you can see here, the API test class extends API methods. And you can see here in API methods what I have. I have an API method, the authentication, generate out token, which I can use in all my requests. I have the uh, get method, post, and also um, get asserted, which means that um, you can add your assertion directly in the method if you want to do it this way, but I not really recommend it. I like to have all my assertion and all the validation within the tests. Okay. And as you can see, um, this class, API methods, also extends general methods. General methods in, it depends on, or you can call it utils or whatever, for different processing or um, combining or reading. For example, I've um, made several methods for reading specific property from the property file or reading some default variables. Also, one of the methods that I used was uh, execute command on a server for example i want to stop my server and then i make a get request and uh, validate that i have 500 error returned other than that i have uh, also um, get xml value which looks through the um, uh, response body and validates that at the path you are given as a parameter there is that value you are looking for also execute db command i mean it of course it's a query not a command 
you can just update some data on a table in the DB and then revalidate by request to make sure that um, this is working. Okay, getting back to the tests, as you can see here, delete from correct, let's say one short example, you are, you delete a user from a table and then you make a get request to see if that user is in the table. And it's really easy to create tests in that way. And as you can see, um, Java has a lot of uh, libraries you can use and you can, uh, sky is the limit. Let's just point it out, sky is the limit. You can do whatever you want in Java. It's more, much more flexible than rest assured. Then not rest assured, then JMeter. This is what I was going to say. So besides this, also we have um, um, error code 510. We are validating some negative cases and some other, for example, as I mentioned earlier, stop server and validate 500 error. I also made it for the demo purpose, also executed a command of a list file or dir, how do you want to call it, list all the files in that location, and then just execute my command that stops the server. Then I make the get requests and I assert that the status code from my uh, request is 500 because my server should be stopped. So this was it. It's not that complicated. Uh, drop a comment in the video. Tell me what you think of it. Did you like it? Do you want to know more about Rest Assure? And uh, how can I help you? Okay, stay safe. Bye.